Now I'll start explaining each function step by step. But first I'll also add a few more dates over here so that we can get a good grip on what this concept is and how that works. So for example, let me have today's date over here. And then I say April 1st, 2021. And then we also need March 31st, 2021. Further, I would also have something like uh, July 15, 2021. And then let's have something from the next year as well. So I have Feb 27, 2022. And one more, I'll put it as December 31st, 2022. All right, that's good. We have sizable number of examples over here. That's six of them. That should be fine, I guess. Now, in order to increase your date or for any form of increment to your date, you just need to add the number. For example, over here, let's say today's date that we have February 3rd, 2021. I want to increase by 10 days. That means increment it by 10 days. So I just enter number 10, add it to the date and we have this here. You see, that's February 3rd and now it's February 13th. That's quite easy to add a date. But now I do not want to just add the date, but I want to add months. What if I want to add six months to the date? whatever the start date is here we have all these as the start dates and I want to move ahead by six months so six months later what should be the date over here now will I calculate how many days are there in six months well that would be a difficulty over here because I don't know if February is part of those six months and whether it has 28 days or 29 days now how many months of these six have 30 days and how many have 31 days it's really cumbersome and we just can't get this. So for our convenience, we have a function called as eDate. We use the eDate. It's asking for a start date. I select this and then it asks you months. How many months do you want to move ahead by? I hit comma and select number six. Close the bracket, hit enter. Now you see this was supposed to be a date, but it's showing as a number format. I know that this is incorrect. Or this is not proper the value is correct but it's not proper so I just select this and select short date or for those who like to use the keyboard shortcuts it's control shift hash the hashtag one so we have the short date over here I might just make this uniform by selecting all these control shift hash now depending on the local format of your computer there is a possibility that despite using control shift hash you may not see the exact format as you see on the screen. Maybe you might see this format and that's absolutely normal because that is how your local format has been designed to be. If you're not happy with this format and you want it in this way, you can anytime go to custom format and select the date that you need. Now here, first I see the date and then the month. Now this is something which I do not want to see like. So I'll select few cells. I go to control one custom I select mm I'll select another m so that it's easy to differentiate between the date and the month for to avoid any confusion for our participants from different regions and then we have date and then y y y y so we have the date over here and that's perfect so six months from Feb 3rd it's August 3rd now what about six months from April so that's e date April 1st comma six months close the bracket and we have this six months later it's October 1st same way please try it for March 31st so I say e date start date comma we select the number of months and hit enter it's September 30 2021 now for these three examples let me just highlight these cells for these three examples, I would want to use a negative figure. That means so far we have been increasing the dates by six months, but now I want to go backwards. Let's say I want to get the date from six months ago. So I say E date, I select the start date, comma. Now this time I want to go backwards. So minus 
and then the number of months. Now either I could type manually or even select it. That's absolutely fine. And here we have this. You see, six months before July 15th is January 15th. Let's try another one. So we have E date February 27 and six months before that. It's this. Now instead of December 31st, let me try something different here. I'll try March 1st, 2022. That should be a good idea here. Let me tell you why. Here, now I select E date, March 1st, comma. I want to go back by, let's say six months again. Okay, that would be a convenient number. We could have just done it minus one as well. That's still fine. Now, September 1st, that's the date over here. So we don't have our dates to spread far across and that's fine. So we can go further forward and we can also go backward when it comes to hopping by number of months. Now we can do this also by, let's say now, if it was five years later, how many months do you have in a year? 12 months, five years down the line, it would be total of 60 months. So if you want to know the dates five years later, you can still use the e-date function, but instead of six months, you enter 16 months. And here you have the dates. Let me undo this. And now EO month, what exactly does this mean? And what's the use? E-date does a great job over here. Okay, by giving you the month. Now let's say for reporting purpose, although six months from the start date ends in the month of October, but for reporting purpose, I would prefer to see August 31st, 2021. In case of October 31st, 2021, September 30 is absolutely fine. In this case, it's it ends in the month of September, even though it's just one day, I would want to see September 30, 2021. So basically, I want to see the last date of that month when it ends. So here, this time, based on these dates, we'll use the EO month function. I would say end of month. That's the easiest way to remember. So we say EO month. We select the start date, comma, months. I want to advance by six months. So I select this. So you see six months down the line, it's supposed to be August 3rd and here August 3rd and here we have August 31st. That's technically it gives you the last day. The beauty of this function is you do not need to worry whether the month six months later is that a leap is that February and if it is February, does it have 28 days or is it 29 days? We do not need to worry about that, whether the month has 30 days or 31 days. Let Excel take care of that. EO month function does this for you. So we say EO month, select the start date. Again, how many months and we advance. Further again, okay, we have EO month. We have the start date and number of months. Now I could have used a dollar sign and simply copy pasted, but it would be great if you can manually do it one, one cell so that you get a good grip of this. It's a good practice, right? You're practicing right now and not just applying any shortcuts here. It's for learning purpose. Now for these three years, we have decided that instead of advancing further, we'll go backwards. So here EO month. We'll take this date and this time minus six. That means go back by six months, but we already have six here. So I'll select this, close the bracket. Now next here, we'll do the same thing. EO month, select the date, minus number of months, close the bracket. And the same here, EO month, select the date, minus the months. Now notice the difference here. Six months later, e-date gives you the exact date. And when it's counting, it excludes the start date. Okay, the count starts from the next day. For example, this is Feb 3rd. The count for six months starts from Feb 4th onwards. So you always say, what is one plus 10? Your count starts from two, three, four. You keep one aside. And that is how by the time you count to the 10th finger, you reach to number 11. So that's exactly the same logic. You do not include the one which you start with. And that's how Excel is calculating this. So six months down the line, these are the months and dates. 
And if you want the last date for those months, better use the year month function. Now we also have the year frac function over here. Let me also put another date over here. Let's say I put something like September 28, 2024. All right, now Excel fails to take this. Let me see if, how this can work over here. I put over here September 28, 2024. Now Excel is reading this as a date. That's perfectly fine. I, I use Control Shift 3 but it shows me in different format. So I'll select this copy format painter and select here. Here we have this. Now, what does the year frac say? It tells you the difference between two dates, but in a form of a fraction or a mixed fraction, you can say. Okay, let me give you a quick example here. We say, it's year frac, start date is this, and end date is this. You can ignore the basis for now. You see, it's 3.65. That means more than three and a half years from February 3rd, 2021 to September 28, 2024. It's over three and a half years. Now, if I were to put this in a fraction format, I can have something like this up to two digits or one digit. So that's three years and two thirds of a year. Now let's try another one year frac. We have the start date and the end date here. Close the brackets and we have 3.491. And what about the next? We have your frac. Select the start date, comma, the end date, 3.49. It's a mild difference between the dates and you can see the difference in the fraction. It's very small. It's just one day. Now, what about this? I say your frac. Select this date, comma, and this. Now, what would happen if I were to select the other way around? I select your frac. First, I take the recent date or the last date as the start date and then the older date as the end date. That means it's backwards. It does not do anything. It just gives you the difference. It does not give you the value in negative. And that's the beauty. Your frac number, your frac function does not return negative numbers, rather it gives you a positive number. Let's try this out again. Your frac, I select future date as the start date and recent date as the end date. Hit enter and you have this. I might want to just format this to control shift one. So we have this yours in this format and that's perfect. Well, in case if you want it in a form of fraction, you can just select this and up to one digit should be a good deal. Here we have three years and a, three and a half years, three and a half years approximately. These are all approximates. Well, decimals would have given you a much better approximation here. Now, moving on, let us see a good application of this year frac function. So we were earlier working on the bright lights corp case study. We have this data over here. Now we see that the date of joining is this given over here. Can we just try to find out for how long have they been working with this company? So here we have tenure. Now I would like to know how much time did they spend here. So I have year frac, year frac. Now start date would be this, the date of joining and end date would be today. Now here, instead of selecting or instead of entering control semicolon, I'd prefer the today function because every time in the future, if we were to revisit this data, we will see the most updated tenure over here. And we just need to close the bracket, that's it. So it's 22.58 years, that's perfect. Now you need to either drag this down or copy and paste this down over here. So we'll just drag it and leave it. That's it. So you see the top two over here are the oldest employees who have been working for well over 22 years with 22 and a half years for Bruce McGill and Suarez. That's Jacob Suarez. And Jacob Suarez is 22 years and 0.33 years. Now what is this 0.33? We can change this to a fraction format. And see, that's approximately one third of a year. 
So in case if you want this to be visible in a fraction format, so be it. Else, this for some might want this to be in decimal, so you get this. So this is closer to one third. This is almost closer to slightly over uh, two thirds and between two third and a full year. So that should be approximately somewhere around nine to nine and a half months. Okay, so twenty years and nine and a half months, and so on. So we have these. That is a good place where we can see the tenority and we can see who's the most senior here rather than going through a dates and trying to find the difference and calculating manually the year function does the job for you. And well, in case if you need to know year of joining, you have this here as well. You can just say year and select this function and you have this. So in case if you are least concerned about uh, when did they join and you just need the year of joining, you have this. Pretty simple and good.